I was just talking about how sad I am. <laughs> I also am very sad. Folks, this was a drubbing uh, at the hands of Costa Rica, an unexpected uh, absolute, absolute thrashing, thrashing on the field tonight. Thrashing. We're here to give you thrashing. We're here to give you our immediate reactions uh, as we have resolved to do uh, immediately after the game. Um, following this will come our podcast, which we always do. You should totally check it out. Find it on iTunes and uh, reach out to us on Twitter, WTP Pod, at a time when you're not feeling so shitty. <laughs> the, the the short game recap uh, is that the the. U.S. never played, and Costa Rica did. And there was about 90 minutes of that. And yeah. at the end of it, Joel Campbell uh, realized that everyone else was asleep and decided to get himself a cherry. Yeah, yeah exactly. Nab that cherry, Joel. He, he, saw, he saw opportunity just waiting there on a platter. Some def- some, and just so, so, literally the worst defending I've ever seen from the U.S. national team. So, I mean, Brooks. How do you end, yeah, how do you end up with... First of all, how is Brooks the only guy back <laughs> on like one of the Campbell goals? It's like, well, it's I kept being like, I kept, I was trying to, I was desperately trying to figure out the substitutes uh, through yeah, this right, being right, sports yeah, exactly. pod broadcast, yeah. and Where, it, I'm, I'm, I'm going, who is that, Sasha Kleshton? Who is this? Who's that? Uh, and it was, I think Gonzo uh, playing himself a little number ten. Uh, leaving Brooks in the back. I mean, it's hard to even begin, uh, folks, with where the where this game went wrong. I mean, I think the first half was not a total dumpster fire, right? Is that right? Was, because like, that's what I wanted to say, but fire. I couldn't get the yeah. words out. I couldn't. Yeah. I wanted to yeah. say the first half wasn't that bad, but I couldn't. It was bad. Bring my, it was I couldn't. Real bad. Bl- well, so yeah, the the overarching narrative of this game is that they were trying, and we were not. Yeah. So Aside is this a lost locker room? Is this a lost locker room? Is I that mean, what happened? I think at some point you have to bring it back to coaching, and you know, I wouldn't have said that honestly. Honestly, at halftime, you could check Twitter. You could see my my progression <laughs> of this throughout the night. Check After the one nothing. Check I mean, the alibi at WTP the alibi. Pod. <laughs> Uh, the goal. The goal comes from Omar Gonzalez not pressing um, when Costa Rica is in a good attacking position and just not really working hard on the play. Well, it looked Pressing like he thought the ball was out on the play. But well, he even nevertheless, just played the whistle, bro, bro, bro. <laughs> shit. And then and the thing Costa- is, it was almost as if if I if I can just interject here, it was almost Please. as if he 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 thought the ball was going out, realized it wasn't, but then was like, no, no, no. I knew it wasn't going out. This was just where I wanted to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like he didn't want to admit that he was wrong and go into a full on sprint like any sane man would do. He instead acted as if this was his plan all along. And it was Jesus it fucking was, Christ. It was, it was talk wild. about talk about a ninety ten player. Yeah, exactly. A ninety ten player. Um, and it was what was coming with what happened to Brooks in the first half. I don't know. He's what he's, so he Brooks and what's his name or? got into an epic duel. What's this guy's name? Uh, Vegas. Johan Venegas, Venegas. Uh, from ben, from the very from the very first from the, from the first four minutes of this game, Venegas is in Brooks's mind trying to trying to mess with his psyche and doing so successfully. Oh my God! And MVP yeah, of the match. MVP uh, of the match easily because he he kind of that was the first domino that fell that led to yeah. this complete collapse by the U.S. Um, and so anyway, so. After the first half, you know, those are individual errors, and I felt like there's not too much that you can blame the coach for, but a capitulation of this uh, magnitude um, just has to come back to something wrong. There's something rotten with this team right now, and it, I feel like this is, if we're ever going to have a chance to fix this before it becomes true, true, true disaster, actually missing the World Cup, uh, now's the time. The next qualifier is in March. So we have we have a good five months uh, to to you know pull things together and rebuild our team. Um, so let's hope that that uh, Mr. Gulati at U.S. Soccer headquarters can see it that way. Um, but yeah, I mean the, it's it's one of the most embarrassing kind of um, lackluster performances I've seen I've seen ever from this team, and you know we're. It, it it feels like if if nothing else did it the the players played out of position the bad results beforehand you know almost that loss in Guatemala that left us completely on the precipice of missing out of the World Cup on the World Cup 
Um, if that all didn't do it, it feels like nothing would do it. But, um, you know, who knows? I'm back. You're back. What up, Clayton? Hey, what's up? Uh, uh, MVP of the match. <laughs> so where do we go, go from there? Vegas. <laughs> so, yeah. So the the I, I have never seen a U.S. team give up in this way. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying absolutely. To, I'm racking my mind for a time when we've just gotten shellacked in this manner. But like even even in those games where we you know lose to Mexico at Azteca when everything's going against us and we're way the inferior team and they're playing so well, we still find a way to have dignity and hard work and effort. Yeah. And you know it, it feels Wrong, like that's not something dude. that just like Wrong, goes away dude. with Wrong, the. Dude. <laughs> We'll get to him. We'll get to him. <laughs> it feels like it feels like this. the the ability for our players to try hard is not something that should just go away from from week to week, you know. And it, so yeah. so to me, it feels like some of the criticism that came out of the Mexico game, where Jurgen was literally naming players by name and saying, you know, the reason that the three five two didn't work is because Michael and uh, Jermaine Jones weren't able to win their fifty fifties. That was his excuse. Uh, what a bitch! That stuff counts at some point, and I, I, it does feel like a, a locker room that just doesn't doesn't have a lot of belief. Um, yeah, Kwame, Kwame, long time, super long time U.S. fan. Kwame, what up, brother? Can't remember a game like this either. It's it. They said on the on the broadcast the worst qualifying loss since the seventies, away or home. Hey guys, so, I just want to say on the bright side to all of you fans of the USMNT right now, nobody can ever call you a fair weather fan. Exactly. So fuck them. Anybody who's anybody who's deeply entrenched and following this team and, and still supports this uh, debacle, this catastrophe, you are of the few and of the chosen. You, you, <laughs> you've, you've gotten your like bad times tattoo. <laughs> Get a today. tattoo if you want to. Uh, you don't have to, though. It obviously means to. that much to you. This is the kind of thing that you can do anyway. Uh, and hey, by the way, Costa Rica played great, and they hey, they, yeah, they were first true, to every fifty fifty. They like the thing. The thing that I kept seeing in the first half was when we would have when when you know Josie or Wood would receive the ball, um, thirty yards from goal. It was two three guys very quickly and in, into into strip them of the ball. Um, and conversely, on the U.S. side, you had players ending up in one on ones constantly. Right. Like it was it was as if we were, you know, down two guys, it seemed like the entire match. And I, I think part of it that was is compact lines. It was very compact that, lines. Yeah, absolutely. And our lines on the on the uh, contrary what were lines? quite open. I mean, the like going into the match on our on our podcast, you could look up on iTunes with people. We the, the, the one tactical note that we had was that that. Uh, Altador and Wood needed to combine with the play because when you play those two strikers, it's too easy for the three at the back of Costa Rica to stifle them and take them out of the game, which is exactly what happened. And what you yeah. saw was Wood and Altador just constantly making the what I what I call the headless chicken press, where one guy <laughs> runs fast at guy with ball. It's the yeah. easiest thing in the world to just look at the guy with the ball and just run fast at him, but it's not effective. It's right? very so, frustrating. No. So, and and let's remember that for at least like 20, 30 minutes of this game, I think, it, this was end-to-end -end stuff. And yeah. it just seemed a little more shaky on the U.S. side and a little more solid on the Costa Rican side. Uh, but the way things unraveled is what is, is so concerning. Yeah, right, right, absolutely. And it, the, again, that's the reason why the takeaway from this game has to be to fire the coach. Like, I, I just don't think we can afford to have a situation like this because this is the kind of game that I'm used to seeing. Like, I remember there was a game in um, in Guatemala last qualifying cycle in that kind of, like, uh, la second to last round before the Hex where we went down a goal and we had to come back. Um, oh, I think it was a comeback. But anyway, these tough situations where, like, things aren't entirely going well for us and we need to find something in within us to to you know, have that effort, have that extra step to, to make something happen. That's common for the U.S. Yeah, the US is it good is. It is. So you know? this was one of those times where we're trying to adopt this mentality that we are a superior team, that we have, that we are somehow attaining to a higher class over time. Right. And right. what we saw was us, a fledgling, like decent team, 
being beaten and not knowing how to deal with it. How quickly our American outlaw resolve disappeared in that right, moment. Right. And now I know there's no need to house one bird with two bird houses, but right. to the to the coaching thing, to the tactician thing, Jurgen Klinsmann fucking subbed out Pulisic I, for Lyndon Gooch. Oh. Am I right or wrong about that? You're right. Am I right or wrong? Right. Oh my You're god. Right. You're right. You're that right. is the dumbest. Right. And then he played Graham Zusi as well. He just to, Graham just to, and he I'm, brought in question. He brought in question for the last like ten minutes. Yeah. Classic. And Vintage. After, Fucking after the four, nothing. Nothing made sense about any of these subs. First of all, Polisic's our best guy. That was evident the entire first half. You don't take him out for Lyndon Gooch. If anything, you take Fabian Johnson out for Lyndon Gooch and let the two of them, you know, run at the defense. Secondly, uh, we don't need to see any more of Graham Zusi. We know exactly what he's doing, and he's not the kind of guy you need when you're in a two nothing hole. And then when you're really, really losing, when the game if- is over, when the game is over, you try to achieve greater long term goals like getting Julian Green some playing time or cap tying Cameron Carter Vickers. You fucking had CCV. He has CCV to cap tie. And he plays. If you lose this guy to England, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow my lid. I'm going to blow my lid. It's, it's, I thought it was blown already. This is going to be explosive. Oh, that makes me want to cry. I forgot about the Cameron Carter Vickers thing, as did Jurgen. This makes me want to cry. As did Jurgen. Unless unless CCV Holy was shit. unless CCV it's decided if, uh, after the four nothing to go take a bathroom break. Just eh, I don't know. Exit it's as if, it's as if Jurgen was like, I'm going out, boys. Zeusy, let's get the whole band together. <laughs> this may be the last chance we ever have to do this dance. At least it wasn't a Roscoe. DJ, we play us one more song. Uh, yeah, the, the it, it, this is unprecedented. I mean, I'm I'm for once kind of at a loss for words. What if like, we lose CCV? We I'm sorry. I know we, you're moving on. We have so the many badness. Yeah. What, and, seriously, what if we fucking lose CCV? No. Stan, uh, Stan in the chat just made a great point that, and I, something I was thinking during the match was that um, the Copa America has papered over. All of these problems because if you look at the the, yeah. the course of World Cup qualifying for this team, culminating in this moment, it's been rough. And the the you know the away trips have been terrible, and the the you know attitude and the group mentality has been really poor. And we've scraped you know we kind of scraped by doing the minimum, and you know the Copa America kind of gave us a reason to think that maybe Jurgen can handle it, but it's you know the preponderance of evidence is is in is on the other side, right? So I think I think I, my my hope is that uh, the the brain trust at U.S. Soccer can look past a one tournament situation. You know that tournament we played we played five competitive games. Oh and man, we, we won three and we lost two. And in a qualifying scenario, you know we're going to be playing ten games. And so it's it's a different kind of ball game where where you know you can't necessarily make one switch and then get lucky and have it have it kind of work out for some period of time. It's like it, it's it's. You, you really need to have that cohesiveness, especially for these tough away trips. Uh, the other thing about Copa America that we forget all the time is that we were at home, right? Yeah. And, and Jurgen's an flaws home... are always are always kind of covered when we play. Man, if Jurgen was the if 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 this if international teams played only for Copas, I'd be Jurgen all the way. Yeah, right. right. I'd be Jurgen all day. That's possible. It's possible he's a cup. Guy, I mean, it, you know, maybe maybe that's his strength is like coming in. Like, I think he would be amazing at taking a group over a year out. You know, like coach gets fired for some scandal and he comes in and and inspires the team to a to a great performance. That's what he did with Germany um, in the 2006 World Cup. Uh, but uh, it, I, we just have to say this is not working, and I don't I don't see it working. Wrong again. So wrong again. Rangan wants, wrong wrong wants it. Rangan wants it so bad. He's so, Rangan is thirsty. Rangan is like, I can't believe Dude. this. He's like, I know I was never a top level. He's he's literally on the broadcast <laughs> pitching himself for I, the I, job. Yeah, I know, I know I'm not a top level coach except for after I'm hired for the US job. He yeah. brought up he brought up Bobby Wood playing for his U20 team, which is one of Bobby Wood the 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 ultimate lowlights of Bobby Wood's career. By the way, <laughs> they failed to qualify for the World Cup, and Bobby Wood got an injury like 20 minutes into the game, and like was watching it from the sidelines when he failed to qualify. But not, Rangan not, knows what's not up. the right time. Rangan was there at practice when Bobby but Wood I, was showing his class. 
We, Tom, Thomas Rongen, I, I appreciate the flavor. I appreciate the little extra flavor, but he does not seem to be very well informed, in my opinion. What do you he, mean? He seemed very well down. informed to me. So, guys, definitely chime in on this. Did Rongen or did Rongen not seem well informed on the team? I thought he was saying some really rational, level headed stuff. I mean, I think he, he has probably good ideas that he would be better off writing down and putting in an article than talking on television. Well, I definitely think he was being a little inappropriate and unprofessional. Could have been a little but, bit of, but that's not to speak to the his ideas. His know, ideas. The ideas. His ideas. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, yeah, the coach never has to go up and talk to a bunch of people, so you, you know we don't have to worry about that. Hire <laughs> Rongen. We'll take anybody. Rongen. Rongen. I mean, and maybe we'll touch on this in the next show. But like, who do you who do you think realistically would be a good choice to step in? Like what, even, even if not a particular name, like the style or type of coach you would like to see, or like what, what kind of outcomes? Would yeah, it is a tough question because, you know, there's like a, there, let's take Bruce Arena, right? How would you describe Bruce Arena's coaching uh, over the course of his, and this is just a teaser. We're only going to go yeah. into this for a couple minutes because we only have a couple more minutes yeah. uh, that yeah. we are broadcasting for, but let's, let's give him a little taste. Yeah. Yeah. How, how would you describe Bruce Arena's uh, flavor as a coach? Bruce Arena is the ultimate man manager. He gets the absolute maximum potential out of all of his guys at any given time. And he knows what buttons to push to make them to, to get their best. Where does he stand in the – as who's who's the greatest coach of all time? This is rapid fire for Ty. The greatest U.S. coach this. of all time? Yeah, yeah. greatest um, U.S. coach of all time. I think it would kind of have to be him by default. Uh I mean, I, I guess I would put maybe Bora uh, Militinovic, who took us to the 94 World Cup when we were pretty much a, a bunch of college kids uh, and got us to the second like round. Jordan of World Cup. Morris? <laughs> yeah, like Jordan Actually, not Morris. anymore, sadly. Yeah, right. I mean, it was, it was Morris-esque. It was like, yeah, yeah. Like NCAA champ, you know, from you know, wherever. Mark, mark wherever. up, mark up, yeah. mark yeah, up. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, Mil Militinovic was, he, you know, came up with great results. But I, I guess it's not Arena by default because Arena has the single best result in the U.S. history, which is beating Mexico 2 nothing at the World Cup in 2002. And, and his, his record... Jurgen Klinsmann, I haven't looked unfortunately, at these matches. Is, but, uh, that's the thing, is that Jurgen Klinsmann is unfortunately in the conversation yeah, for yeah. best coach, U.S. coach of all time. Right. That's and a it, very bad statement for the, for the state. The best record. For the, he has the best, the, like, just on paper, the best record. But this um, is Here's the problem with this. The way that Jurgen Klinsmann has gone about his job is the same way I've gone about my job. The, which is at a ramen restaurant. The difference is <laughs> my job doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> and Jurgen Klinsmann's job is very important to very many people. I do just your, well your enough at so just the right times, so you know, just when the manager's looking, I put a smile on and, you know, get the good shifts on Thursday afternoon, you know, nice and easy. Jurgen Klinsmann has done the same thing with the, being the coach and tact, uh, what's it, technical director of the U.S. men's national team. Clayton, you, you are so much better at your job. I have talked to you. You are a dedicated and loyal employee. You are no Jurgen Klinsmann, okay? Uh, <laughs> Thank you. You're right. You know what? To hate myself is as ethically wrong as to hate others. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the clarification. So we should probably wrap up here. But to, Yeah, to, let's to, do to it. This has been context, fun. This has been super fun. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Check us out on iTunes if you want to. Here's a full game recap. Um, Stan in the chat is talking about how, you know, we have never won in Costa Rica. So it, this is the expected result to some degree. But I think the, the, out, the, the takeaway that we have from this is the manner of the defeat, not the defeat itself. And this just looks like a team that's nowhere close to, to standard. And, and, it, and it, it feels like even if we do get to a, the World Cup, which it, we now do stand a legitimate chance of missing out. I mean... Only two, sure. you know, only two of the teams from the Hex are going to directly go out. But that the playoff against an Asian team, as I was saying during the broadcast, that could be a really dangerous team. Um, and you know, I don't have a great deal of confidence that we would, you know, beat Japan <laughs> home and away necessarily. Yeah. Um, so you know, coming into that, coming in, coming in in the top three is definitely going to be a challenge, and that's a that's an uphill climb from here. Um, and we have. You know, I mean, the the just thinking about it statistically, the um, ESPN odds 
Uh, they have a soccer power index, which is reasonable statistically. I don't love it, but it's okay. Um, they had us at uh, 59% after a loss in this match. Um, and the, the goal differential from this match could matter. Um, goal but differential the, the big often takeaway matters. is that this team was not trying hard enough to win a big qualifier, and that would have gone whether we were home, away, or anywhere else. You know, it doesn't yeah. doesn't matter where we were in Concacaf. We were going to lose tonight. The team didn't have the mentality to win tonight, and that has to be the coach. Let's do. We always do on the show uh, one hope and one fear uh, for the coming time until the next episode, which is sometimes a couple weeks, sometimes a couple months, sometimes a couple days. Tonight, it's uh, more like. The uh, let's say a day. Let's do hopes and fears, a hope and a fear for tonight for these players and this team hope for tonight. Okay, well, let's get I, deep. My hope, I mean, obviously, my big hope is that the coach gets fired, but my yes. small hope is that Jurgen Klinsman gets up on the podium and says, You know, this is on me. I screwed up. I take full responsibility. You look at the Please. great coaches of, the, of history. It does do not that. matter what happened. It does not matter if one guy screwed up his assignment that he's been practicing, that you told him was important, that you know you yeah. drilled and drilled and drilled. Yeah. It does not matter. You take the pressure Coach off. Coach K, when when Duke goes out of the tournament, Coach K gets up there and he says, it's my fault. I'm sorry to the kids. Period. Yeah. Please, so Jurgen. That's, that's my hope. That's a, that's a good hope. Uh, my fear is that... Graham Zusi has some sort of dark magic, <laughs> genuine fear, and that tonight he's going to unveil it on the world. And it has something to do with his long, long hair. I fear Graham Zusi. What's he hiding in there? What is, what is your power, Graham Zusi? <laughs> That's all we got for you. I suck. I love um, minor occult uh, readings from the I Ching, you know, uh -huh, uh -huh. things that require chance. From like a John Cage perspective, I like that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm really into pastels, although I'm frustrated with the fact that they can't combine with watercolors very well. Um, and I very much like uh, frames around my thrift store pictures. But I don't love any of that stuff <laughs> as much as I love the Nats anyways. Rongin, 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 Fire Jurgen. See you next time, guys. Good night. It's we the people. It's we the people.